The following program is sponsored by the Hope Team, friends and partners of Keith Nix Ministries. Coming up on The Lift with Keith and Margie Nix. Worship centers your focus. You think about what your mouth is saying or singing. Whatever is coming out of your mouth, your mind is hearing. A song of praise centers your thinking. How many, how many believe that, that life could be different if we start centering our focus in the correct direction? Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So I want to sing about the abundant life of God. Hello and welcome to The Lift. I'm delighted that you're joining with me today and I'm excited about this new series we're beginning. Hey, let me take just a moment and say thank you to all of our partners and friends. Our partners help make this happen on a weekly basis and we so appreciate you. And if you've been watching for a while and maybe God's speaking to your heart about partnering, about being part of what God's doing through the lift, we'd love to have you join the team. You can find the information. It'll come up on the screen how you can get involved. We'd just love to partner with you. I'd like to invite you to the lift church in Sevierville, Tennessee. God is up to some big things among us. We are so humbled and delighted with what God is doing. So we'd love to meet you in person. Come visit us some Sunday, some Wednesday. Come visit us during one of our special events that's coming up. We've got some amazing things happening and we'd love to get to know you and to pray with you in person. Now today we're going into a message that I preach called The Power of Uncommon Song. The power of worship from one of my favorite passages in the Bible, Acts chapter 16, where Paul delivers. He, he makes a young lady free from a demonic entity that has been possessing her with the word in the name of Jesus. She is freed and it, it makes people mad, creates a riot, a ruckus. They arrest Paul and Silas with him. They beat them. They imprison them. But about the midnight hour, Paul and Silas began to sing praises to God and God sent an earthquake and it was the original jailhouse rock and they got freed and a great thing happened. It's just an amazing story of what happens in believers' lives when we learn the secret of celebrating God in song even in the lowest places. So let's go into the message. Following the message, I'm going to come back and pray the prayer of faith with you and for you. So stay with us, stay tuned, and receive from the word of the Lord. Beginning in verse 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination. The Greek is python. A certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. Everybody say many days. Many days. Notice Paul didn't deal with it the very first moment. That's important. I know, I know from studying Paul, he recognized it was a demonic spirit the very first moment. But just because you recognize something doesn't mean it's time to deal with it. Mm, that's extra, but we gotta, we've got to understand. Sometimes, sometimes we see something, and as soon as we see it, we think we've got to jump at it. But Paul didn't do that. He waited for the unction. Yeah. He waited until the Holy Spirit gave him the green light. Yeah. And then he went for it. Turn around and tell somebody, you need the unction to function. But Paul, greatly annoyed, greatly annoyed. He didn't want the devil's advertisement. 
turned and said to the spirit, not the girl, he spoke to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, not his own name, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And he, the spirit, came out that very hour. The Greek indicates immediately. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But when her master saw their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Now look at me just for a second. Let me give you a little backdrop on Philippi. Philippi was a city that they called Little Rome. It was a city where distinguished officers in the military of Rome retired. It was a city where, where they went and they retired. It was a great commercial city and it was a place of rest for these officers and they made it as much like Rome as possible. And when Paul first arrives there, he only meets a few women, Jewish women at a place of prayer. There was not a large Jewish population in the city of Philippi. And so notice that they immediately start speaking anti-Semitic words. These these men being Jews are troubling our city and because we're Romans and they're appealing to the mass that we're a Roman city. We are little Rome and these people are teaching something of customs and traditions that are anti the worship of Caesar. Then the multitude, verse 22, the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off Paul and Silas's clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. Everybody say rods. Trying to tell somebody, I think that might hurt. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into the prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a command, he put them into the innermost prison and fastened their feet into the stocks. The devil doesn't want you going forward, does he? He wants to stop your progress. But verse 25, can you read verse 25 aloud with me? But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Come on, go ahead with me and read verse 26. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew out his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm. We are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This guy's pretty smart, isn't he? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Somebody lift up your hand and say, I'm believing for me and my household. But watch this. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. Mm. Notice two things here. This is just extra. Turn tells me this is just extra. Hallelujah. But notice two things here. Number one, it was not the sign and wonder that, that led them ultimately to Christ. It was the sign and wonder that got their attention that Jesus was the Savior. But he spoke the word to them. Because faith does not come from signs and wonders. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes only by the word. So, though there's a great sign and wonder that catches their attention, he says, I want to be delivered. I want to be saved. And they spoke the words to them. Somebody say hallelujah. 
And notice that all in the house heard the word. If any of his children had slept through that earthquake, he woke them up and set them down. Or if they had all been awakened by the earthquake and some little boy is so sleepy, he said, buddy, you're not going back to bed right now. We're coming in here. This man's going to tell us how we can be saved. Come on, I hope somebody can hear me right now. How many believe there's sometimes you gotta, you've got to take the leadership of your home and you've got to sometimes say, all right, we're all going to be right here. Come on. Hallelujah. I applaud every parent here at the church because you're making the decision to say to your children every week, Sunday after Sunday, few exceptions, but you're saying, no, this is our priority. We're going to be in the house of God. Oh, some say, but we need some family time. Come on. You can have great family time right here. Hallelujah. And if you feel we got a great children's program, but if you feel you want to have a closer family time with your children, that's okay. Bring them and sit them right down beside you. I'm losing some amen. Some of you looking hard at me right now. But how many believe, how many believe we've got to keep the vision that not only do we want to be saved, but we want our household. Come on, will you just wave a little bit and thank God for household salvation? Hallelujah. I mean, I think you ought to take 15 seconds and really prophetically praise him for household salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Some of us, some of us had a drug problem when we were children. I did. I was drugged to church every time the doors were open. Caleb had that drug problem. TJ had that drug problem. Hallelujah. Come on, Margie had that drug problem once her mom got born again. Come on, it didn't matter. One night, I was in, Dad was in Oklahoma preaching revival. I was out in the day, uh, you talk about bored. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you, I, I discovered ways to deal with boredom. I hate, I don't like it when anybody says they're bored. Gonna get quiet now. Because I think boredom is a symptom of laziness. Uh, I discovered ways to, when I was bored, to entertain myself all by myself. I went out there in Oklahoma and stayed in a little hotel. They had a little dumpster out back. I didn't have anything else to do during the day, hot Oklahoma day, but I went out there with a fly. I found a fly swatter. There were flies everywhere in Oklahoma where we were. I took a fly swatter. I went out there and I was Zorro. Hallelujah for a whole <laughs> afternoon. I was, I was dispatching those enemies right and left. <laughs> I mean, and I was good at it until there was one ornery, big old horse fly, and he's just flying around, and he keeps dodging me, and I'm after him, and I'm just, and I fell into the, the edge of the dumpster with my head, hit my head on that edge, whoo, man, it hurt like the dickens, a big old knot popped out, I mean, it seemed like that knot was that big. Probably only, no, it was big. It was big. You could see the vein, you know, purple run in front of it. Well, hallelujah. You know, they, they laid hands on me and prayed. Hallelujah. No trip to the ER. No, just, just prayer in the name of Jesus. And so here's what I thought, little kid. And I love the Lord, but we'd been in church every single night all summer long. I thought, man, I got this, I got this wound on me. I remember saying to them, I, I guess, I guess I'll need to stay in the hotel tonight. It wasn't even a hotel, it was a motel. I guess I need to stay in the motel tonight. Hallelujah. Let I me mean, know what the answer was. Yeah. Even that kind of bruise couldn't keep me in the motel watching TV. Hallelujah. I went to church and got the rest of my healing. Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. You say, well, that sounds like a horrible childhood. Come on. I'm going to tell you something. That was a great childhood. And I thank God that I'm walking in his presence and in his power and in his victory. Thank God for mom and dad. And so he took them. They all heard the word and he took the disciples, verse 33. He took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, and immediately he and his family were baptized. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now when he had brought Paul and Silas into his house, he set food before them and he, watch this. He rejoiced having believed in God with all his household. I pray that's going to happen to you in the name of Jesus. But this salvation was a result of singing. It's a result of, yeah, they preached the word. Yes, there was a great sign and wonder. But it was ultimately a result of singing. How many know that song is powerful? We, we, music, I think music's the spice of life. 
I, I, I like music. I, in fact, I, I mean, I really like it. We sing patriotic songs. Come on. As, as Americans, as people, we sing happy songs, love songs, sad songs. We sing somebody did somebody wrong songs. Hallelujah. We sing some idiotic songs. Listen, I want to say to young people now, if any parent ever listens to your music or grandparent and tells you that the songs you're singing are stupid, just take them back to the 50s. <laughs> I'm going to get quiet in here. Yickety yak, don't talk back, you know. Hallelujah. Some of you will get that and some of you won't get it. But, but we sing faith songs. We sing, we sing worship songs. Come on. I'll turn and tell somebody he's an equal opportunity offender. So hold on. Hallelujah. Yeah, we spend millions of dollars every year on music. We wake up to it. We go to bed to it. We listen to it throughout the day. There is power in song. Anybody remember Willie, Willie Merck? Well, how about Hezekiah Walker's song? that we just sang. Every praise is to our God. Really, Merck was a little nine-year-old boy in Atlanta, Georgia. He was picked up one day by a child molester, a pedophile, kidnapped, grabbed off the street as he was walking, enticed toward the car, and then grabbed and thrown into the car, and the man started driving around Atlanta. He drove Willie around for three hours. Finally, though, without touching him, other than to grab him and then tell him to get out, Willie was released three hours later on the other side of the city. The story was amazing. This man had not done what he had kidnapped Willie with the intention of doing. Why? Because Willie Merck, sitting in the back seat of that car, little nine-year-old frightened boy, he kept singing. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The guy yelling at him, shut the blankety blank up. But Willie, Willie refused to shut up. They just learned the song in Sunday school a week before. But hallelujah, he's singing every prayer. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, hallelujah. Willie, Willie was delivered from the intention of the enemy because he had a song in his heart and he released it out of his mouth. Somebody help me praise God. Let me read, let me read verse 20, 25 to you. Acts 16 verse 25 out of the Weiss translation. It says, now about midnight, Paul and Silas, while they were praying, were also singing praises to God mingling petition with songs of praise. And the prisoners were listening to and enjoying their singing. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Song was the key for Paul and Silas. The Bible said they sang hymns. You know what a hymn is? It literally, that word literally means a song that celebrates God. A song of celebration of God. God. Oh, that's what Willie was doing. He was singing a song of celebration of God. And the demons inside that man couldn't stand to hear a little nine-year-old captive potential victim go ahead and declare every praise is to my Oh, glory. Come on. I don't know who, who, what you're facing, who's against you, what circumstances are happening around you, but somebody will lift up your hand and say, if I can just learn the power of song. Come on. In the book of Acts, they lived in uncommon song. Uncommon worship. Hallelujah. It's not normal. It's not ordinary. But I like what Tommy Walker said. He said, worship is a declaration of our weakness and God's strength. When you worship, you're declaring, you're admitting your weakness, but you're also declaring his strength. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jack Hayford says, God says, sing. Look at somebody and say, sing. sing. It is one of the principles of life in the kingdom. It is, song is a key, one of the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. 
I like what A.W. Tozer said. He said, without worship, we go about miserable. Without worship, we go about miserable. Well, I'm going to say it one more time. Without worship, we go about life miserable. Ah, but with worship, somebody lift up your hand and say, we go about life joyfully. I want to give you three things from this passage, three, three keys that I want you to see, and we're going to be home. Number one, worship centers your focus. Worship centers your focus. You think about what your mouth is saying or singing. You think about it. In fact, why don't you do this? In your mind, count to 25. Just count to 25. Just start right now. Ready? Count. Now, everyone say hallelujah. hallelujah. What happened to the counting? The counting stopped because your mouth spoke. So whatever is coming out of your mouth, your mind is hearing. Oh, hallelujah. So worship, a song of praise, centers your thinking. How many, how many believe that, that life could be different if we start centering our focus in the correct direction? Come on, am I doing all right today? You're with me right now? Why is this important? Because listen, most people's theology, their belief concerning the truths of God, most people's theology is formulated more by the songs they sing than by the books they read, including the Bible, or by the messages they hear. That's why we, we make it a priority here at the Lift Church to, I don't know if you've noticed, but we sometimes rewrite popular songs. Because we like most of it, but there may be a line in it somewhere that, that just isn't in agreement with what this book teaches. And so we take the liberty to rewrite it. I, I hope that doesn't offend you. But if it does, it, it'll have to. Because people's theology is formed by what they sing. If you go about your life with a, singing songs like, I'm a man of constant sorrow. No, no, no. No, no, no. Come on, if you, if, you, if you fill yourself with that, your theology, your belief of God is being formulated. You may even say, well, Ecclesiastes says, man's days are few and full of sorrow. That's right. The Bible does say that. It's in Ecclesiastes. But those words were written by a backslider. Come on. I'm all, yeah, this is where I could really get everybody upset at me. They're written by a backslider. I choose to believe what Jesus said over what Solomon said when he was backslid. And Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So I want to sing about the abundant life of God. Praise God. You know, Jack Hayford made this comment. God says, sing. It is one of the principles of the kingdom life. Singing is a kingdom key. And worship is integral to all that we do. Not because God's an egotistical maniac and needs our worship. But when we worship him, when we sing his praises, something transpires uh, that causes us never to be the same again. I hope you enjoyed this first part of the message I really hope you'll stay with me for the conclusion next week. Uh, we, we heard the story of Willie Merck, the little boy who just began to sing in a horrible situation. He just kept singing three and a half hours, singing, every praise is to my God. And as he did that, what the devil intended to do to him, he could not do to him. I believe that same principle will work in your life today. I want to pray with you. I want to pray, first of all, if you've never committed your life to Christ, uh, what are you waiting on? Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. I know even religion, even Christians sometimes paint this gloomy picture. Uh, sometimes our songs are filled with some gloom and doom that is not the reality of what Jesus taught. He said, I'm come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The they includes you. He wants you to have his life 
the quantity of his life, eternal life, you can have it for the asking, and not only the quantity, but the quality of his life, the abundant life. You can learn the principles of the kingdom, including song, and you can walk in it. So you need to make Jesus Lord of your life. Let's do it right now. All you got to do is repent. All you got to do is say, Lord, I do believe in you. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I confess Jesus as Lord of my life. And if you'll do that sincerely, he'll respond and the Holy Spirit will come live big in you and you'll never be the same again. Maybe you've been backslid. It's time to come home, brother, sister. It's time to get restored, reacquainted, renewed in your relationship with the Lord. Maybe you need healing in your body, healing in your mind. We're going to believe God for miracles right now. Father, I stretch my hand toward these, my friends. And I just pray in the name of Jesus that the nail-scarred hand of the Almighty will touch every person. Lord, for those who need to be saved, do it right now. For those who are coming home to you, restore them right now. Let the love of God wrap itself around every person and Lord, may they never be the same. I pray for healing and wholeness spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, relationally, every area of their life. Let them experience not only eternal life, but the abundant life that's theirs through Christ. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. All the information's been up on the screen. Write us, call us. I got a little book I'd love to send to you. Uh, just ask for it. We look forward to seeing you at the lift in Sevierville. Until next week, remember Jesus is Lord. Let him be the Lord of your life. now to experience the life-changing ministry of best-selling author and teacher, Jerry Savelle. For over 40 years, Jerry Savelle has devoted his life to teaching believers across the globe the biblical principles of faith, the favor of God, and financial increase. Through personal stories, solid teaching, and inspired motivation, you'll discover how to persevere when situations are tough and stand on God's Word until victory is achieved. You may be in the greatest battle right now you've ever been in in your life. You may feel like you can't stand anymore. You've done all you know to do, and yet you don't see anything working in the natural. That is always an indication you got the devil right where you want him. He is a, he has just fired his best shot. You're still standing, and you're gonna win. Hallelujah. Don't miss your opportunity to see Jerry Savelle live and hear an encouraging, faith-saturated word from God that will inspire your faith and equip you to win in life.